Keisha with Wild Blossom Studio. The purpose of this video is to walk you through the steps to create a beautiful centerpiece with your curated flower box. Okay, so at this point you've unboxed all of your flowers and you've taken the crucial steps explained in the previous processing video to properly hydrate your flowers. Now it's time to take a look and see what we've got. So we've got some greenery that we're gonna start with. We've got our mass flowers, which are gonna add depth and form to our arrangement. We've got our interesting textural accents, poppies, fever few, phlox, and baptisia foliage. And then we've got our showstoppers, these, Everybody wants to bring to the party. So dahlias, we're gonna kind of set aside and wait to use those until we know where to accentuate our arrangement. And then we've got snapdragons for our line flower. So now that we know kind of what we've got, we're going to fill our vessel with fresh clean water and get started on our arranging. Okay, now that we know what our flowers are, we're going to talk about the vessel that I sent with your curated flower box. This is a plastic compote designed by Holly Hyder Chapel along with her plastic armature pillow. So what you're going to do is you're going to snap it together. So line these guys up. Okay. Easy peasy. And then that sits on top of your vessel and acts as a grid for you to lace your flowers in. This is gonna make designing a compote arrangement so much easier for you. I can't wait to show you how to do this. So first step is filling your container with some fresh, clean water. All right, so this just gets placed on top. Some people wanna take them down but you don't tape it, you just place it on top. When we lace our stems in, it will hold this down, and when we're finished, you're gonna be able to pick this up, dump out the dirty water, and put fresh water right back into this so that your flowers live for a really long time. Now we are ready to design our beautiful centerpiece. We are gonna start by greening out our design. So today, I am using Baptisia foliage, provided by a local farmer, Lush Flowers on Vine, here in Fort Collins, Colorado. For this centerpiece, I'm going to create something that's going to look really nice on a long rectangular table. So the greenery is a great way to develop the shape of your centerpiece. So we'll start by lacing the greens through our grid into the compote. And this is a little wobbly at first, but don't worry, it will start to stabilize as you start adding more stems. So to create balance, we're gonna have something nice and long coming off to the left. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I like to find something with a nice, beautiful shape like this one. So again, I'm gonna take off those lateral stems. And you can see I'm kind of measuring. Those aren't gonna work. So we'll take that off. Remember, don't cut too much off. You can't add stem back on, but you could always cut more off. That's a little tip I learned. Okay, so now we have this nice long shape. And I want the front of my arrangement to be a little bit shorter than the sides of my arrangement. So these are cut a little bit shorter. And with your greenery, you really want to make sure that you're covering this grid. We don't want to be able to see this plastic. So you just want to work through your design and start filling in the shape. Placing those stems into your grid so that they're creating a cross. And 
we don't want to make our arrangement too tall because then people aren't going to be able to see over it. We don't want a big hedge sitting on the table. We want something really pleasing to the eye so that people don't have to struggle to conversate and look at each other through. So that's really important. So what I do on this side, I also want to do on this side. And that's too long, so I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to trim a little bit more off. Okay, perfect. Again, so with flowers, I call this a break. I'm going to use this piece and this piece. Just makes your greenery go a little bit further. We're just moving throughout our grid, kind of covering up the mechanics for the armature, making sure that things are kind of dripping that over the edge of this compo. We really don't want to see the vase. We want the flowers to be seen. The vase is just the vessel. All right, so at this point, we're really trying to cover the rim of our arrangement. We don't want to see any of this green or this clear plastic. So we want to kind of focus on covering that with our greenery. Notice how I am lacing the flowers into the grid and they're all going into this central point of the design as if they were actually growing in a bush. Don't worry about any of these little jagged pieces. When we edit our design at the end, we can take them out if they're still noticeable, but oftentimes they're helping fill the arrangement out and you don't even see them. So you can see how this is really starting to fill out and we're, we're getting a nice shape. So we've got these long sides, shorter fronts. We're starting to cover that rim and really fill things out. So this stem has got a nice break right here. So now I've got two pieces. Okay, so again, I'm adding things at an angle. We're about done adding our greenery. We're gonna finish it off with a few more stems. We'll strategically place them. We see this big plastic part over here. So I want to make sure that I hide that. So we're going to put something in low here. I feel like there's another spot in this area. Big chunk of plastic. Nobody wants to see that. Okay, so we're about done with our greenery and I really love this shape that is taking form. And I'm, I'm very inspired by this, love it. Okay, so our next step is to add our mass flowers, which is really gonna add depth to this design and it'll also cover our mechanics. Okay, so today I chose um, this dark pink um, dianthus for our mass flower or base flower. This flower really works to fill in your design. It's a layer in your design. So we're not, we might see a pop of this really dark pink, beautiful color, but it's not focal in our arrangement. This flower is meant to add depth to your design. We're gonna start by adding these really low within your design. Because they're kind of the base layer. Okay, again, you wanna add these in at an angle and we're gonna put them really low. And I'm obviously used to what length to cut these. It never hurts to measure. So I've chosen this to be our mass flower and our base flower because for one, they're less expensive than the gorgeous dahlias that we're gonna focus on in our design. Two, they've got this nice round moundy form and they're fairly large so they're going to cover a lot of area in our design. Meaning 
that we can use less flowers to cover the base of our design. So that's why they call them a mass or base flower. So as we place these, we need to remember that they're kind of going to be covered by our focal flowers. Now that we've placed our mass or base flowers, we're going to accentuate the line of our arrangement and continue covering up the mechanics of our design. So this really is not an exact science and that's what's so fun about flowers. You cannot make them ugly. So don't be intimidated by the process. You know, feel free to take things out, recut them, add them back in. And honestly, I've taken apart bouquets and remade them because I didn't like what I created. So don't let the process intimidate you. Let it do what it wants to do. It's a wild and free art form, not an exact science. Isn't that better? Put it in here, didn't like it, replaced it where I do. Okay, so we've got this big plastic piece down there. So this snapdragon is gonna go in really deep into our design. Okay, and again, see how I'm placing flowers at different levels, different lengths. It just really, helps create that garden natural vibe, which is so in style right now. Okay, so I think we have enough snapdragons in this design. And I know this one feels like it's kind of sticking out like a sore thumb, but when we add our pops of beautiful textural accents in here, it's gonna create a lot of impact. So we kind of have this nice, Hogarth curve going right now. So this is going to really accentuate this line. And as you can see, this greenery has really helped create this entire design. Without the greenery, we would be trying to create this line with flowers and you're gonna spend a lot more money. So you green first, you add your mass, create the line. All right, so we are going to add some accent. I chose Feverfew for this design. I think the pop of yellow kind of plays nicely with the Snapdragons. I like to always have multiple of one color. The white's gonna make this really bright and nice. So we're going to kind of add this in to create little moments of texture and burst of color. So I'm gonna start by adding some lower to the design and then we'll work our way forward. So I'm gonna insert this down low. I've added some lower here. I'm gonna put some midway. Again, we don't want everything at the same height creating a really flat look. So see how that's kind of flat? We want to make sure that we pull things out and let the flowers have air and room between them. So it's really important to leave air as an element in your design. When I place a flower, especially these light airy whites, I want them to be taller than some of these other flowers. So if you can see, I'm going to place a white fever few and it's gonna float above this flower. And if you feel like some of these lower stems are mashing up against your other flowers, edit them, remove them, take them off so that you've got this nice dimension of color. So I'm gonna place some of these longer, again, to accentuate or reinforce the lines that I've created with my line flowers and my greenery. Okay, so we have added these white accent flowers, few or few, and we are ready to put the showstoppers in. Here we have our dahlias. These are the highlight of your piece. 
these are the expensive flour that you want to show off. You don't want to bury these down deep. You want these to float above all of these other flowers that you've added to your design. This is what we want to focus on. So dahlias are pretty fragile. They bruise really easily. So I set them in a vase while I'm working with them. Some of the flowers you saw that I laid them out on the bench, they're a little bit hardier. These are very fragile. Um, they're also our focal flower, so I don't want them to be damaged. Okay, again, I'm going to make sure that I'm measuring these before they, I insert them into the arrangement. And your grid is gonna be pretty full at this point, so you kind of have to work it into the design, being really careful that you don't snap the stem. So don't feel like everything has to be symmetrical. When things are growing in nature, they're very asymmetrical. They don't grow at the same heights. You don't have one on this side and one on this side. Think of it as a wildflower field. So don't feel like if you put this here, you have to have one here. So just kind of focus on creating dimension and flow within your design. I want this dahlia to kind of face out this way, come out long here. So you can see that when I measure, this part of my stem right here is too long to come in at this harsh angle. So you can kind of feel like that's about how long I need that flower. So I'm gonna cut that off and insert my flower at this very sharp angle into my design, making sure that I'm hitting the water. So now that we have this guy on, I think we need to focus on kind of filling out the center of our design. And because I plan on placing this on a rectangle dinner table, I need to make sure that all sides of my arrangement are beautiful. I want every guest to get a gorgeous view of flowers not just one side. Now, if you were designing this piece to sit against a wall somewhere, you would leave the back with just greenery and put the flowers up front. So remember, these are our showstoppers and we want them to kind of float above. But we also wanna maintain this really nice curvature that we've got. All right, I am loving how all of these colors came together. I do feel like this would be a great time to edit my arrangement. I feel like I've kind of lost a little bit of my curve. So I'm gonna really kind of examine what I've got going on here and maybe replace a few stems. And you can see how much that really changed the design, just taking that one thing out. So we're gonna put that guy over here and I think even these are kind of taking away from that nice valley that I created. So we're going to cut that down shorter and kind of put it back in. Okay, so we're going to replace this fever few stem but much lower than it was because I really liked that, that shape that we had going even a little bit of this one. Oh yeah, I feel like this is better. I'm even gonna put this over here. Okay, so this is also a really good time to make sure that you don't have anything that's like kind of brown or yucky. So I'm gonna take these brown leaves off here. We've got this kind of ugly nub right here and the leaves really are like Kind of cracked and not very beautiful so I'm actually going to go down and cut that off at the next leaf set and just get rid of that piece and that way that doesn't end up focal so I think we're very very close to finishing this I want to add a little bit of um, more texture to it and I have something really fun to show you and I'm going to add this really cool accent. These are poppy pods and I love the shape and the color and they just add a little bit more interest to our design. 
So again, we're gonna kind of float these above in a few, a few places. So just a touch. I'm gonna put a couple in the center, kind of deeper into the arrangement. To fill in a few areas. You know, just experiment with your flowers. It's, it's okay to try something, decide you don't like it, take it out gently, and put it somewhere else in the arrangement. And I think I will add a few of those snapdragons that I held back, because my center just needs a little bit more. We're about finished with this range, arrangement, and it's really beautiful. I like to kind of take a step back, turn it, and make sure that I like each side of it. And this is a good time, so I found a little hole in here. So I'm gonna take some of these snapdragons that I held back, and I'm gonna add just a couple. See, that's filling that area out really nice. All right, we have completed this beautiful centerpiece. I am really excited about how the colors came together, the shape that we've created. Don't fuss over creating a certain shape. Just let the flowers tell you what to do. And don't forget, at the end of your project, edit the design. Just a few stems placed differently can change everything. All right, I just wanted to talk for a moment on how to care for an arrangement like this. The nice thing about the pillow is you can lift it off the compote, dump out the dirty water, refill it with fresh clean water, give your stems a nice clean cut, and put them back into the fresh water. If you recut the stems and replace the water, your flowers are gonna last for more than a week. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned to create gorgeous centerpieces for your own home, your own table, and any host that you might be gifting this to. For more inspiration, visit me at wildblossomstudio.com or on Instagram.